There's two times the door to the subconscious mind opens up. When we wake up in the morning and we go to bed at night, and it's simple brain chemistry and simple physiology. We have a circadian rhythm. As soon as there's light, our body has been pretty much programmed yeah. uh, that we begin to release serotonin and different chemicals that kind of wake us up. So our brain waves go from delta to theta to alpha to beta and you kind of slide up this way and then you're back to conscious awareness and local in space and time. When you go to bed at night, you go from beta to alpha to theta to delta and you slide down. Now, if you're stressed, uh, you can't stop thinking, you stay in beta and you, your thinking actually is arousing the body because you're thinking about your problems, you can't slide down, right? So those two points uh, in the day, when we wake up in the morning and go to bed at night, um, when we're and when alpha, or our analytical facilities are suppressed, we're in theta, we're in a hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. And the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open. What separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. So as you suppress analytical facilities, you can program anybody to do anything. So then what really happens for most people before they even reach for their cell phone, and by the way, the statistics are 86% of the people in the Western world, first thing, first thing they do is they reach for the cell phone and they connect to everything that's known. I would never tell people how to think but I would give them information to cause them to think. So the device is reminding them of things that are known. And every person, every object, everything, every place is mapped neurologically in our brain because we've experienced it. And then we have an emotion associated with our coworker, with our boss, with our ex, with our whoever. And so the moment we start responding, now we start feeling the same way. So now the environment is actually controlling the person's feelings and thoughts. Yeah. And anything that controls the way we feel and the way we think, we're victims to. So something's programming us to think and feel a certain way. There's nothing wrong with that. You, can, you should check your text but, and do whatever you need to do. But the first thing in the morning, if the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is open, why don't we program a new behavior. Why don't we rehearse a different way of being with our children, with our spouse, uh, in our Zoom meetings, when we're alone, when we're in traffic? Is there a better way to evolve our experience? So if you're truly in the game of evolution, you're truly in the game, like one lifetime, one day. What am I working on today? Can I respond a different way to this person? Um, can I think this way instead of that way? Let me be conscious of my unconscious thoughts. Let me not be in a habit, let me stay away from certain emotions, let me practice feeling these emotions, see if I can maintain it. Now you're in the game, you're out of the bleachers yeah. and you're on the playing field. So it actually happens even before the cell phone because what most people do is they wake up and the first thing they do is the brain is a record of the past. They think of their problems. And those problems are just memories that are etched in the brain that are connected to certain people and objects at certain times and places. Yeah. The moment they think of their problems, they're thinking in the past. Then when they think about their problems and they feel unhappy, now their body's in the past. And if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, yeah. wow. And then the emotion that's associated with it is now the body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how we think and how we feel creates our state of being. Now here's the problem. If you can't think greater than how you feel. And you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny and you understand that feelings and emotions are a record of the past, then you're thinking in the past and your life will stay the same. Yeah. 95% of who we are is a set of memorized behaviors, yeah. uh, automatic emotional responses, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs and perceptions that are running pretty much like a computer program. They're automatic, right? So, so, so you can think positively all you want. You can say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm free, I'm free, I'm worthy, I'm worthy. And your body's saying, no, you're not, you're miserable, right? So it makes sense that there's gotta be an unlearning process and we gotta stay conscious yeah. of our unconscious thoughts that slip by our awareness unnoticed. We gotta watch how we speak. We gotta observe how we act. We gotta, we gotta, pay attention to the way we're feeling and we have to become so conscious 
of those unconscious states of mind and body that we don't go unconscious in our waking day. Because how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality, and your personality creates your personal reality. So if you're thinking the same way, you're acting the same way, and you're feeling the same way, nothing's going to change mm -hmm. in your life, right? So then the unlearning process is as valuable as the relearning process. The breaking the habit of the old self has to happen before you reinvent a new self. You gotta prune synaptic connections before you sprout new connections. You gotta unfire and unwire before you refire and rewire. You gotta deprogram and then reprogram.